everyone, and welcome to the Sydney St. James Show. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me for episode 11. As you know, following the earlier episodes on my show, I've been talking about basically the making of an author. In other words, over 50 plus novels that I've written over my career, I've been talking about each one in the first many episodes. But my phone rang the other day and I picked it up and I found out that a very dear friend of mine had lost her battle with cancer. So today, I'd like to take a break away for just a moment. And a break away, I guess you could say, from the different stories of the different books I've written. Um, and I'll be back. I'll be back next week with another great episode of Making of an Author when I'll talk about the second novel in the Gideon Detective series, Gideon Returns, A Damsel in Distress. So stay tuned for episode 12, and we'll be talking more about the many novels that I've written. But for today, back to the telephone call I got. You know, growing up in a small town of Eagle Lake, Texas, uh, one would have to know where the town was and know a little bit about it. It's 65 miles southwest of Houston, Texas. Back in the 1950s, the population was no bigger than 3,500 people. And today, the population is no bigger than 3,500 people. It really hasn't grown in over, what, 70 years, I guess, or so? But on this telephone call I got, the name of this person is Wanda Smith. And Wanda was a dear friend, and we, we grew up together. And that's that's the thing about growing up in a small town. You grew up in a small town, and I still remember going to uh, the first grade, the second grade, and the third grade. And everyone that I graduated with were in those classes. So unlike growing up in a big city, you don't know every single student in your class. But in Eagle Lake, we knew every student in the class. And we took care of our friends, girls or guys. On the football team, we were one very tight family. Well, I couldn't help after the phone rang and I put it down and heard about Wanda passing to sit here in my office where I'm doing right now and staring out the window and thinking about those good old days back there when we were growing up in school and coming to think about it, one of the first things that I do remember was as if we got, I went to her eighth birthday, okay? And then I probably went to her ninth or 10th birthday, but we all went to each other's birthdays growing up. Then we got older. Girls became interesting, but so did guys become interesting. And then in high school, I remember this very young, well, to me, he was young back then, but he was three years older than Wanda. And his name was Sam Center, and he was the new game warden in town. Well, gosh, they started dating, and the next thing I knew it, Wanda married this guy, and he was three years older than Wanda. I never understood what she saw in a guy so much older than we were. But while thinking about the good old days, I started remembering all the wonderful things of growing up in a small town of a population 3,500 was really all about. You know, sometimes growing up back then, there was, there was one definite part that I didn't necessarily really appreciate or learn to appreciate, like the absence of anything to do past eight o'clock at night. But in all the 18 years of going through school and growing up in Eagle Lake, it helped me appreciate really just how charmed my upbringing was, especially as many consider leaving the big cities now 
in favor of smaller towns during this awful coronavirus pandemic that we're in the middle of. You know, the first time I took my wife, Barbara, on a hike out at Eagle Lake, everyone we walked by waved and they greeted us. And my wife looked at me and she said, do you know these people? No, that's just what everyone does here, I told her. In the outlet mall in Round Rock, Texas, near where I live now, it's considered rude to acknowledge another person's presence as you're going about your business. In small towns like Eagle Lake, it's rude if you don't. Now, I'm still sitting here in my office and still staring out the window, got my hand on my chin and reflecting on all my memories of growing up. And I can't forget T.J. Smith. That was Wanda's father, who was always in my father's store across the street from City Hall, talking about what the next pothole on the streets that needed fixing. You see, T.J. was the city manager for our small community, and my father, he was a mayor for as many years as I was in Eagle Lake, which was 18 plus. Now, here's another interesting one. I remember driving my 1954 Ford. Yep, that's what I drove. <laughs> and I drove it up to Wanda's two-story house when I just turned 16. With such an important day in our small town, everyone knew when you turned 16, you would leave town with someone who had their driver's license and go to Columbus, Texas. And you would go and do your driver's ex examination, the, the test, the driving test to get your driver's license. Well, that particular day is still in my memory. And still in my memory, I still remember driving up to Wanda's house because I just got back from finishing my driver's test and I was by myself behind the wheel in Eagle Lake, Texas with my driver's license and man, was I free. From that day forward, I used to drive myself everywhere. I didn't have to go to Wilcox grocery store pulling a radio flyer wagon behind me and getting several bags of groceries four blocks away. I could take my car to the grocery store. Oh, and yes, let's not forget to mention, I could take my girlfriend riding around every day after school. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here recollecting the good old days and you won't believe what just went right, right past my window here. A go-kart, a little bitty flat go-kart with two guys on it or two young kids on it going down the road. Well, I did the same thing with a fellow in town named Freddie Walker back then. And the only thing different was that we came around the corner and some bolt came off of the brake line. So the brakes on the go-kart, which was going about 20 miles an hour, which is fast for a go-kart, it wasn't going to stop. So our next stopping place was up on the front porch of a neighbor's house where the go-kart jumped the steps and flew itself up against the front door. Oh, we had a lot of fun on those go-karts back then. Had another good friend named Gus Seaholm. And Gus Seaholm, his father, built a go-kart track. And wow, did we have fun. Well, the go-kart's on past my window now, and it's back to other memories of Eagle Lake and I was thinking about the farmer's markets and how much fun they are. They hold them once a month now at Wolf Ranch in Georgetown, Texas. But in the good old days, when you grew up in a small town like Eagle Lake, you lived only a 10-minute drive from Altair, Texas, the crossroads of Highway 71 and Alternate 90. There it was on either side of the road, the watermelon farms, or every other neighbor 
was growing a garden in their backyard. Why not pick fruits and vegetables ourselves? I love going and picking my own vegetables from those farms out on Highway 71 south of Columbus. The population of Altair, 125. Also, downtown. Well, I went to my class reunion, I guess you would say maybe three years ago, and Wanda was at the class reunion, and so was Louiva and Judy Fay and Sandra and Kathy and Mary Ann and Francis, and I'm sure a lot more that I didn't mention here, but those just kind of popped up in my head. But I noticed that on the streets, a lot of the businesses weren't there anymore. And especially one, which I used to frequent quite a bit, were independent bookstores in our small towns. And nowadays, they're gone. They're a dying breed with the rise of Amazon and those other on tail online retailers, but they are. They're a disappearing breed. In my experience, although most people read their books on a Kindle now, or a Nook, or even listen to them on their Apple iPhones, the staff in our small town of Eagle Lake at the Winterman Library know just how to give the perfect recommendations care deeply about literature, and put on some of the coolest events to this very day. When I was there for a while, after my father had passed away, running the family business, they were they invited me to be on the board of directors for the study club, and we looked after the library. And that was really a highlight for my time back then, and I sure enjoyed it, and I did help him on lots of different projects I did for him, but yes, it's there now. It's still going, and it's still doing a great job offering people uh, computers to look at when they go in there and so forth. But the Winterman Library was there in the same time that we're talking about, the same time as Wanda and I were in high school or even junior high, and it's still there to this very day. You know, Growing up, I had the opportunity to meet several of my elected representatives. I even interviewed one of my U.S. senators for our school newspaper in the eighth grade, Jake Pickle. Yes, I got my start in journalism and writing at an early age of my life. In a city and a state with a much larger population, such as where I'm at right now in Georgetown, Texas, my elected officials, they're, they're not very accessible. You know, I'm now leaning back in my chair, but I'm still staring out my window here, and it's a great view. I can see the uh, Lake Georgetown just down the hill here quite a ways, but I can still see it, so I have a lakeside view. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's all it is. But you know, when I was in a small town of Eagle Lake, we're in a school with the same group of people from kindergarten through high school. When you spend that many years with someone, those friendships last a lifetime. Just like the memories that led me to presenting this podcast. There's no planning going into what I'm doing right here. I got the phone call and I stopped everything I was doing. It was a sad moment for me. And I'm sure for everybody that grew up in my class and everybody that knew Wanda. So what I'm speaking to you today about is just kind of like coming from my heart. So those memories that led me to presenting this podcast, I still remember. Now, here's an interesting one. I still remember Wanda and Louiva and Francis and Judy Fay and, and Mary Ann. We were all at the Friday night powder puff football game and our team winning the game. I also remember being elected the powder puff runner up for the homecoming king. I didn't win the king. William Bruner won the king. But now... Many, many years, and I mean to say many, many, many years have gone by, 
Then, only last year, my older now friends gathered together. My girlfriends there were Marianne and Sandra and Kathy, Judy Faye, Louiva, Francis, Darlene, and of course, Wanda. It was a, a wonderful gathering as we got together. I won't say what year it was, what, <laughs> because I'm still a very young fella. But anyhow, it was so wonderful to see in our go to school for 20 years together friends at the reunion. You know, I'm back now staring out the window and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about growing up in Eagle Lake and there was another thing. Um, and I think, I don't know exactly how Wanda played into it, but I believe either her dad and uh, mom owned the place, but there was a place called the Dairy Delight. Now, the Dairy Delight was like the place in Eagle Lake. When that 8 o'clock time came, everybody would get in their cars and they'd drive around the very small town and make a great big circle and make another circle around the Dairy Delight and take off again and come back again. That was the meeting place. So back then, there really wasn't a lot to do in the town. Even that one Dairy Delight in town closed around 8 o'clock, I guess you could say, and or pat, just past dinner time. But going for a drive with the radio blaring turned to KTSA, an AM station out of San Antonio, and the wind blowing through the wind wings of my 54 Ford with no destination in mind was always a solid option especially with all my friends packed into my car that had 24 speakers in the doors and in the ceiling and one big loudspeaker up under the hood. Yes, great memories. You know, there's another one. And, and when you really are sitting here like I am and you're just reminiscing and re trying to remember your memories and all, you can't forget, without the light, pollution of the big city of Houston, the night sky in Eagle Lake was always full of stars. And I didn't really have to worry about the safety of being out late at night since everyone else, or the old fogies you might say, were probably sleeping anyway. No policeman would bother us if I got a can of paint from A.J. Struess on the corner of Farm to Market Road 102 and Main Street downtown, and I called my good buddies Terry and Davis and William and Billy Lloyd, and we all tag along together and go out and paint Senior Bridge. It wouldn't take long, and word would spread. And Wanda and Francis and Weva and Mary Ann and Kathy and well, Kathy had to be a little careful in painting Senior Bridge because her father was the principal and she sure, she sure didn't want to get in trouble. But, you know, residents in small towns, they all look out for each other. If someone is sick, people bring food. If someone needs help, people offer it. During happy and challenging times, people feel a sense of responsibility for each other in a way that large cities just can't replicate. Growing up in a tiny community can definitely have its drawbacks, however. With so few people around, gossip pretty much travels at the speed of light. Take for an example. My girlfriend one day was talking to a friend of mine at the post office. Then, the next thing I was told was that she and him were going steady and wanted to break up with me. Just gossip. At least in that situation it was. Lots of laughs. <laughs> but it also has its perks. Being raised in a tight-knit community often means feeling like your whole town is your family. And 
you never have to set foot inside a big box store. But, of course, one came in the 1970s, and from there forward, one by one, the businesses in this small community have closed their doors. You know, while these type of things might have seemed insignificant during childhood, they actually have played a significant role in shaping how we see the world as adults. Although most of us have left the small town of Eagle Lake, we still remain ready to help when we can when it comes to those we grew up with and started out in kindergarten and graduated together 18 years later in high school. My class was 53 students. However, although we have parted waves with our lives and families, the invention of Facebook and other social media has given most of us the ability to keep up better with one another. Just a few days ago, I received a text from Louiva, who reminded me I missed her birthday. I didn't miss it. I wrote her a happy birthday, but walked away from my computer without hitting that tiny little enter button. Doesn't that count? Heck, even she admitted putting the cereal in the icebox one day and the milk up in the pantry. It happens, especially now, and we all still laugh about it. When your town doesn't have much in the way of entertainment, it's important to learn how to make your own fun and find people who share your sense of humor. Growing up in a small town taught me the importance of finding young people, like-minded friends who really get you. I had just those friends when we got busted for doing donuts in the middle of the practice field and got caught. Louiva, Francis, and Linda D., where are you today? Lots of laughs. <laughs> you know, my best memories are doing stupid, pointless things with really great people. Driving around aimlessly, going to all the night diners to drink coffee, riding around in a shopping cart, we found in the bushes. It didn't matter what we were doing. We just wanted to spend time together, and we always found a way to have fun. In a close-knit community like Eagle Lake, it goes without saying that everyone helps one another, and becoming compassionate as a kid will stay with you for a lifetime. One thing you learn in a small town is how to be a good neighbor. And in a small town, everyone is your neighbor. Wanda was but one block away from where I grew up, and I was always seeing my good neighbor. Well, I happened to turn back and look at my computer screen, and I see the little timer at the top, and my publisher, when I send my podcast in to the publisher, they always a little kind of frown upon me if I go beyond that 30-minute mark. And believe it or not, I'm getting close to that. So, in closing, my memories might have failed me a bit, but while I was walking across the stage and getting my high school diploma, they were handing me the Bosch and Loam Science Award for the most outstanding science student that graduated. Right behind me, walking across the stage, was Wanda Smith Center, and Wanda was receiving her Betty Crocker Cooking Award. When I was on the football field, trying my very best to defeat Garwood in our final game of the football season, I sat in the end zone with Wanda's brother at halftime. And together we listened to the coach try to tell us what we needed to do better, who we needed to cover better, and so forth. But we really didn't do much listening because we watched the girls and the cheerleaders and the twirlers 
in everybody in the band at halftime. And in particular, we watched Wanda leading the Eagle Lake High School Band as drum major in her fashionable orange and white colors and her baton held high. You know, when it was finally time for me to pack up and move away, I felt an overwhelming amount of sadness to leave. It was weird to graduate high school and even more so to say goodbye to my classmates, who I quite literally grew up with. I dreaded every single goodbye, no matter who I was saying it to. For the longest time, I didn't understand why I felt uneasy about leaving. But now, I realize that I felt emotionally confused because I planted such strong roots in the town where everyone knew my name. I knew that no matter where I lived next, this town would always be my home. Well, that does it for a special edition in episode 11 of the Sydney St. James Show. I'm so glad you joined me and I promise to be back with you on episode 12 and tell you all about Vincent James Gideon, my new detective, in the second novel of the Gideon Detective series, Gideon Returns, A Damsel in Distress. Happy listening, everyone. Bye now. Have you heard about Anchor.fm by Spotify? It's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Yep, Anchor has the tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started.